Welcome to the Dragon Rider Podcast. My name is Mapaya and I am here to help fellow energy healers to stand deeper into their sovereign power through energetic surgery, inner dragon training and magical child coaching. In this podcast we talk about all the things from the energy world, trauma healing, archetypes, inner sabotaging dragon patterns so that you learn how to fly while you play here on earth together. Disclaimer. Listening to this podcast episode is at your own risk. <laughs> All opinions and beliefs that I hold are mine and take what you need and leave what doesn't work for you so that we will be beautifully designed the way we are needed to be designed in this moment in time. End of disclaimer. Hello, fellow dragon riders. Welcome to this episode on healers, victims and charlatans. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so... I personally actually don't really like the word healer. A healer will always attract the archetypal match of a victim. If you are the healer, if you're the rescuer, you will attract a victim. And a victim, I mean, nothing wrong with that. We all, it's a survival archetype. We all have it and we all nurture it and all the things. But we can also stay stuck in the victim and be like, you healer, you rescue me and I'm going to give my power away to this healer and you have to fix me and heal me. And in that dynamic, that archetypal dynamic, there's no healing happening because there's only a codependent dynamic happening because healing is all about self-empowerment and you cannot empower yourself when you give your power away to someone else that needs to fix you. So the word healer implies that it needs to fix broken things. And as energy healers, we work with frequencies and we dissolve lower frequencies or we replace lower frequencies with higher frequencies, which are connected to karma, integrated trauma, energetic blocks and or beliefs and so as a energy healer we work with beliefs when i say i'm a healer i say i fix broken things that need to be healed and so i already install a belief that people are broken and they need to be fixed And I don't believe that that belief (laughs) is very useful because it creates a feedback loop of I'm broken, I need to be fixed. And also because you're not broken, you are already whole in and of itself. And there might be just some energetic blocks that could be moved around, dissolved, changed, whatever. And then things, energy and things start flowing better again. So it's more as if you are making a piece of artwork, right? So if if the person, instead of the broken person that needs to be fixed, it's like a masterpiece, which is also always a work in progress. And the energy healer is the artist who creates an upgrade of the masterpiece that was already there. Because you're moving around and clearing blocks and uh, working with the energy so that the masterpiece gets an upgrade of like more energy, more colors or like different. Like we need an upgrade in, you know, new belief systems for this next phase of our life. Or we need to clear some old trauma that, that is hanging in our field that's not necessary anymore because we learned the lessons already. You know, it's like... Changing the painting on your wall because you are in a new episode of your life. So energy healers are kind of like artists. And so it's also not the case, in my opinion, that the healer fixes the broken person and is now the hero 
who needs to be thanked and uh, his f uh, uh, feet being kissed <laughs> of how amazing and great you are as the, as the healer. Like, <laughs> that's just a little bit silly in my opinion. So if the healer is the artist and the masterpiece gets a, a, a makeover to become a newer version of, of artwork, it's what happens is that the energy that's being moved around just helps the body to find its own natural way of getting back into balance. So it's not the healer who, who does the work. In, eventually, it's the healer who guides the work of the body from the person itself. So this is why I don't like the word healer, but instead I use the word energy worker because we work with energy, we manipulate energy. And with that, we just, you know, clean up that masterpiece so that it can evolve and grow into like its upgrade next level shit with more beautiful colors as this person already was upgrading, evolving into its next version of of itself that's how i see it that's that's what i found to be uh, a better belief system to work with and also because we work with beliefs our own beliefs that we hold as energy workers have an effect on the artworks that we create so if i uh, don't believe in the power of my own energy work that will affect the results of the creation and this is also why i don't really like uh the thing that's going on in the in the healing industry the energy work industry where it's like i'm calling out the healers that are not pure enough or that have not a high frequency enough or that have like entities still on them or they haven't been healed enough they didn't do enough trauma healing themselves yet and so what happens is that uh, uh, energy workers are being called out often with some like shame judgy undertone because there's like still pain underneath it right and so what happens is that there's this psychic virus of shame and blame and judging going around in the in the energy work industry that activates the dragon perfectionella the inner dragon of our perfectionist so everyone is like oh my god am i pure enough am i like protected enough am i uh, healed enough or shit like I am not perfect enough because I still have these wounds here and there because I mean come on we've got wounds of our ancestors like from ages long in our system like we're like never done integrating pain and wounds and shit that are all in our subconscious and shit this is a never-ending journey like we're perfection doesn't exist right we're always we're always on our journey and I'm not even talking about our sacred wounds from which our spiritual gifts arose, right? And so um, this perfectionella is actually creating more damage of the doubt and the insecurities and like, oh, am I good enough? Like, and all these beliefs like, no, no, I'm not perfect enough. I'm not healed enough to do this work. They create all these like mop, mop, mop <laughs> beliefs. That actually affects your energy work way more than your unhealed wounds. I realized I was doing this. I, I got catched by this psychic virus. And I was like, well, if I am having this, then probably other energy workers have this as well. And this is not helping. This is not working. How can we do this differently? How can we... How can we shift this perspective? How can we shift this psychic virus that's going around in the industry? And so what I found is that, um, yes, 
of course there are energy workers that work from the dragons their inner survival archetypal dragons and their wounded child patterns it's like you know i'm going to be the messiah i'm such a good healer and i'm going to help everyone i'm going to save the world and now i'm finally a good person yay now my esteem is finally now i finally feel safe <laughs> you know or i'm going to rescue the people and then they will be my friends and they will love me forever and they will never abandon me because they need me <laughs> you know of course we have these things of course we have these these patterns these archetypes in us and these wounded child tantrums and and manipulation things going on of course because we've got our sacred wounds from which you probably maybe also got your spiritual gifts from right and so let's not shame and blame these wounded child manipulation patterns and and rescue messiah dragons let's love them and nurture them and give them hugs because that's actually what they need they want to feel safe they they get activated because they want to feel safe and do they feel safe when they're shame blame and and judge no they actually become bigger and create more tantrums and more manipulation because they feel less safe we all have them. Doesn't matter how pure and perfect you are, it's super easy to get back into these uh, wirings. So instead, I realized like, oh my God, instead of being angry at like, that energy worker is not pure and look at the, the wounded child patterns, and now this person is like hurting other people and it's like making things worse and la 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 la. Inst instead of, you know, seeing it that way, I started seeing it like, wait, like if, if someone wants to get to a certain energy worker, there's, there's a match there. There is like a divine shuffle. There is something that this person gets from this session. Even though we can't see it. Even though it seems like this energy worker is such a charlatan, fake ass motherfucker. <laughs> um, there will be an exchange of lessons, of energy, of growth, of expansion, of evo evolution that we will never see. That we will never understand with our, with our own minds. Even if it's a victim learning that it cannot give its power away if it wants to get empowered. So I realized that. And, and this also brought me to, to the place of like, do charlatans exist? Like, how do you know a, a good healer from, from, from a fake healer? Right? Because it's not that like a business coach who can say, the people who worked with me made this amount of money. So look, I'm a good business coach. It doesn't work that way, especially when you get into the healer victim dynamic. It's like, oh, this healer couldn't fix and heal this victim because duh, <laughs> they were in this healer victim dynamic. And so the victim was giving their power away to the healer and the, it, it turned into a codependent relationship. And Healing is all about self-empowerment and standing in your power, finding your power back. So you cannot get your power back if you're giving away your power to someone else who needs to fix you. The, so you cannot, right? It's like, oh, this is charlatan because it couldn't fix this victim. Well, yeah, because it doesn't work that way. And, and so as an energy worker, it's so much more vague and abstract because it's not like... Everyone can see energy as, as good as certain energy workers can when they dive deep into the work. So sometimes it's like, yeah, I feel so much better after an energy surgery session. And I'm like, woohoo, like 
going as a rocket, like skying, like woo, super easy. Like I know this works. And then other times it's like a slow integration of things and it takes time for things to process and doors to open. And then some are like, well, yeah, now that I look back on it, things did shift after an energy surgery session, but I can't really point the finger on that it's exactly that because of so many other things I did as well. And so you can't really, you know, measure these things. And that and that makes it very vulnerable for charlatan drama when people involved don't hold strong beliefs on the energy work being done. And this is why a lot of people believe that energy workers are charlatans. And of course, it's the beliefs that the person holds that matches the beliefs of the energy worker. And this is why it's such a energetic match of the energy worker and the masterpiece. What I started realizing was like, well, actually, charlatans don't exist, really, because they are just like artists. It's like one artist, you're like, oh, my God, amazing art. I love this. This is such a good artist. And then another artist, you're like, man, I don't get it. Like, what the fuck is this shit? This piece of shit, like fucking junk. Is this uh, trash or is this art, you know? And then you could say, like, this is a bad artist or like uh, a wrong artist. while you're not realizing that that the neighbor on the corner is like, oh my God, that's such an amazing artist. Holy fuck, where have you been in my life? So what we can see as like bad and wrong and 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 fake, it's for someone else, it's it's fucking magic and gold. <laughs> and so because we work with beliefs and we can be so stuck in in, in our own beliefs, and especially if we uh, hold beliefs for very long, because beliefs are like the chicken and the egg. They create experiences and then the experience reinforces the belief. And then we create an, another experience with that belief and it reinforces the belief again. And if we have that over a long period of time, we have like really deep, 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 deep engraved beliefs. And this is how the world works. And this is how it is. So any energy worker that is not fitting my belief system in this way is a charlatan. Well, for you maybe at this moment, this energy worker is a charlatan. But for someone else he isn't. And maybe in 10 years from now, from now, you meet the same person and you're like, oh my God, where have you been all my life? You're amazing. Because we shift, we evolve, they evolve. And it's like, you find like the right energy worker, like the right artist for you in this moment. And this is how we are all in a divine shuffle and everything is perfectly orchestrated and we don't have to shame and blame and talk bad behind people's back because everything is just fine. And even those who are, st who, who are working from these wounded child patterns or shadow archetypes and the dragons, they will learn their lessons too. They will learn their lessons. They grow and evolve as well. The people who, who went there also learn their lessons and they grow and evolve well. And it's all perfectly divinely orchestrated. Oh, what a relief. You know, of how we also have beliefs of, you know, there are all these like people that think they can just be like a healer or an energy worker online and then and they just create a social media account and they start selling and like whatever they don't even have like a certificate they never studied their things and blah 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 and you know there are people who who have these beliefs and they judge the people who don't have a certificate and then you also have the people who say well as an energy worker or a shaman you need to be initiated by life and you are born with this gift right and energy healers who have learned reiki or have like a theta healing certificate whatever they like fake ass because they haven't been really initiated by by god or whatever like 
And I, I mean, I used to think that way because I had been going through so much difficult initiations uh, through life. I, I hold these beliefs as well for a while until I realized like, wow, you know, the energy workers who have a, a certificate, they might not have the experience yet, but they will learn the experience and they will learn their lessons from there as well. And the other way around as well, the people that don't have the certificate actually have experience already. So <laughs> there is like, there there are these two different camps and we don't need to shame and judge each other. It's it's We all get our lessons in our own way, in our own timing, so that we are divinely timed for the divine shuffle in the perfectly orchestration of divinity. <laughs> <laughs> And I realized this because when I woke up into having my transformer arms that started to transform in all these energetic tools and my arms started to move around by themselves, by themselves because they were uh, reacting to energy. Hell did I know because I wasn't really uh, like around spiritual people at all. Like I didn't know what was happening to me. So I went to the to the doctor here in Holland saying like my arms start to move around at night. And I like feels like I'm getting possessed and I don't know what's happening. And the doctor says like, well, you might have carpal tunnel syndrome. I'll send you to the hospital. And I went to the hospital and, and I told my story there. Like, I'm, yeah, like my arms move around by themselves and I don't know what's happening. And it seems like I'm getting some kind of like possessed at night. And well, let's, you know, check you for carpal syndrome. And well... I mean, carpal tunnel syndrome is for, uh, because I'm an artist, it's like artists and, and waitresses who use their muscle in their wrist and then the, the muscle gets thicker and then you can get like some pain there and whatever, something completely else. And I realized that I wasn't being listened to. I realized that the doctors and the health industry couldn't help me. Like I was outside of their programming. I My symptoms didn't exist in their programming, in their if this and that programming. So I was scared as fuck and I started traveling the world to seek for answers. And I re and that's where I learned how the matrix of Holland and the, and all the beliefs create the matrix. And then I, and like, I was cracked open by that. And I realized like the doctors and the health people who are like saying that alternative um, health is uh, are charlatans. I'm like, yeah, that's because their beliefs don't match. And then we've got the other way around as well, saying that the health industry are charlatans and fake ass motherfuckers who just give pills for uh, 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 pain uh, killers instead of, you know, working with the cause. Um, yeah, and sometimes that's actually very useful, right? Sometimes that actually benefits. So there's like all these belief systems that we hold that create uh, uh, for everyone such a different journey and so we need such a diversity of energy workers and doctors and and different holistic approaches so that for everyone on their journey there's someone that is an energetic match so that we, we work together and um, we don't have to shame and blame and judge other energy workers or shamans or intuitives or priestesses for having different beliefs and opinions because they will serve their people you will serve your people i will serve my people and it's all a divine orchestration divine shuffle <laughs> so Go stand in your power and don't let this inner dragon perfectionella dim your light. And also you don't have to be afraid of being called a charlatan. Because what I have seen also within myself is this fear of being called a charlatan actually manifests this creation of being called a charlatan. And that's when we spiral down out of our power and really... You know, we fucking need you in your power. The world needs you in your power right now. So this is why 
I created like new beliefs for you here if they resonate with you so that you can create more empowering feedback loops for yourself. We are now free from these fears and beliefs. This was the episode on healers, victims and charlatans. Dun, 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 dun. And don't forget the disclaimer at the beginning. <laughs> if you don't resonate with these new beliefs, you don't have to, you know, install them. You can put them in the trash again um, because I want you to decide for yourself what is good for you at this moment. And with that being said, this is the end. Thank you so much for listening and maybe see you next time. Bye.